Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Now I am taking a little bit of time here at base camp to do some things on my van, but I thought today was a perfect day for me to share with you guys what you've been asking for. I am going to be doing two separate videos where I share the larger and smaller Ridge Monkeys that I own and what you can make in them. Now this is gonna be a recipe video, so if any of you already have picked up a Ridge Monkey, this is for you guys. And if you haven't, and you're not quite knowing if this is the item for you, I hope this convinces you. Now I will be leaving a link in the description below. This is not a link that I make anything from, it's just to help you guys find these because I did personally have to import mine from the UK. But I think that you're going to see why I did not only this once, but twice because I liked it so much in this video. Today we're gonna to be starting off with the smaller Ridge Monkey. This is the one that is considered a sandwich maker, but there's a lot more that you can do with this if you're traveling as an individual. And today I'm gonna to show you some of the things that I like to make. Now, even though I am at base camp, I will only be using the items that I have currently in my van set up, which means that I will be using this portable gas stove in addition to the other things that I carry with me in my van. But despite the fact that we'll only be using those things, we're gonna go inside because it is 103 degrees here in Texas today and uh, it's a little bit too hot to cook outdoors. So inside we go with all our goodies. Okay, so now that we're inside under the air conditioning, this is very nice. It's been super hot in Texas. And even though I do have an air conditioning unit that keeps the inside of my van cool, I do cook outside. So it's pretty toasty outside right now and um, not the most favorable of conditions in the outside. So I thought that this was a better way for me to show you variety and then also several different items that you guys can make in the Ridge Monkey. Now I've been using my Ridge Monkey for over a year the smaller one that we're gonna use today and I love it I've made all sorts of different things in it and today I'm gonna to share three super simple things that you guys can make I will go into a little bit more detail on the different specs of it and things like that so you can see it a little closer but oh my goodness okay guys this is the Ridge Monkey we'll be using today this is the connect compact and this is very small it's about the size of a traditional sandwich because it that's what it's for originally was a sandwich maker but you'll notice that it has this nice neat print sleeve that goes over it this is to protect it while I'm kind of toting it around in the van itself and you can see though that it does have a zipper on the side to kind of tighten it and loosen it so it does fit very snug and then inside is the Ridge Monkey itself now with that said I have been using this thing a lot so as you can see it is pretty scuffed up on the outside with me using it and banging it around on top of my cooker and and things like that but despite that it is a good little cooking beast right here now as we open it up inside you will find this little pullout this pullout has some different utensils on it so you have your own spatulas and then also small spoons to use just in case you don't have some that you're already carrying around in the van I typically do use the ones I already have in the van but these have come in handy a couple of times and then on the back side you will find your handles. The handles themselves have a nice little stow and go place right here. So we're gonna pull those out and then connect them. Pulling them out is super simple. They simply just pop out and then you can place this back into the neoprene sleeve. You'll notice that the handles each have these little buttons on them and then also these little circles at the back. These circles are actually magnets. That's what makes Ridge Monkey kind of unique. Now in order to put these on, you just push down the button and use it like a puzzle kind of. It goes straight into here and then clicks into place. And that's it. You are now ready to use your sandwich maker. It only took those steps and now you have this nice cooking space within and then also on this end it closes and really holds tight. So that was super simple. See, it, it's really nice and it's super easy to just access and use and do all sorts of crazy things. Just for a size comparison, 
Yeah, my head is really small. So is this. But now we're gonna to put together some ingredients so we can fix our first meal inside of this. This again, guys, is perfect for a single serving or if you're wanting to make something that you only need to heat up a little bit of. For our first meal, we are going to make some of my favorite tacos. These are black and blue tacos. And I went ahead and took the meat and ended up marinating it in this carne asada seasoning with a little bit of oil. And this is the seasoning that I used and this is kind of what it looks like whenever I first put it together. But now that it's put together, it's been marinating overnight in the refrigerator. I usually like to do this because it really locks in the flavor and makes it so, so good. But now what we're going to do is just finally dice it down so that it's gonna cook nice and even in a relatively quick time frame. Now this is just regular stew meat that I picked up. Sometimes I pick up fajita meat, sometimes I pick up like a nice top loin steak. But for this, I found some stew meat and thought since I'm gonna cut it down anyway, it will totally do the job. The main thing is you want to marinate it because it becomes more tender with the marinade. So that's what I've done and this was like a super simple like two minute step to do the day before so now let's cut it up. Now in my van I do have a nice cutting board that's just thin and folds up however I already have this one here at base camp and I am going to use it in addition to this one knife. Now in my van I do keep three or four smaller knives this is just going to make the job a little bit faster and um, that way we can get to cooking because I'm hungry. Now what we're going to do is just take out a few pieces at a time here and just really just cut into this and make it smaller. You'll notice that it starts to kind of fall apart because it's been sitting in that marinade so it comes out into these little perfect bites and I'm just going to cut down a few of these. Typically if I were to purchase a large thing of stew meat that would be enough to feed me for like a couple of days. That's a lot of meat usually. So I try to get smaller portions typically and then just kind of cut it down to what I need at the time. So I'm going to get three or four of these going and then we'll go to our next step. Okay, now that we have cut that up, I'm going to just take this and put it into the Ridge Monkey pan. And my goal is to make maybe two tacos with this. Normally, I do not make a full load of tacos. So this is perfect for me. And again, I'll have that meat left over that I could either cook after or I could just go ahead and cook all of it at once and then have meat in the refrigerator just for making up tacos later. So here we go. That's perfect. So I'm going to spread it out nice and evenly, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic to that. So a little bit of garlic, here we go. Just kind of sprinkle it into the middle. And then I'm also going to get a little bit of my Kerrygold butter, which I carry with me everywhere. And I'm going to put just a pat of butter kind of in here so nothing sticks. That is all we literally need to make this happen. Now we're gonna bring out the cooker and get it started. Now, of course, all I do to make this work is make sure that the butane cartridge is lined up, then I push down to lock it into place, and then we will start our flame on high. But I will quickly move it down to about medium. Otherwise, that's gonna be far too quick of a cook for us, and it's gonna end up making the meat tough. Okay, Ridge Monkey time. Let's put it on top and make sure it's nice and centered. And then what we'll do is we will just wait for a couple of minutes and then we will flip it. Now with this Ridge Monkey, you'll notice since it is smaller that it doesn't fit as well as the larger one does on the overall stove itself. This is just a regular Coleman stove. And so the pattern of the grooves on the little feet that come out from the fire are a little bit different. So you really have to kind of find the place that makes you the most comfortable with it and then place it there. So that's what I've done here and we'll just give it a few minutes and we'll check on it. Now something that's really neat about the Ridge Monkey is it's kind of set apart from other cookers in that it evenly heats on one side and then you can flip it over and evenly heat on the other side. So when you're cooking things like meat that's super helpful because it allows you to get a more even cook on something like a steak or like a piece of chicken. Uh, things that you're not really necessarily cutting into. Now with things like this that are already pre-cut that just means it's going to cook a lot faster 
and a lot better because it's gonna hold that moisture from the butter inside of it and make it just this really yummy bite. So, we'll get to that in just a minute. I can hear some sizzling already starting, so let's look. Okay, so we're gonna open it up, and in order to do that, you just kind of pull up on the back part of the handle, and yep, we're already having some sizzle, so the butter's starting to melt, but it's very early on still. But yeah, you can definitely smell that garlic and the carne asada seasoning just really coming to life. Ooh, this is gonna be good, guys. This is gonna be good. Now again, I'm making my favorite tacos. These are black and blue tacos. So we're using the red beef, the meat, the steak, and then we're gonna be adding blue cheese crumbles to the top of it. We're gonna be serving it up on a nice corn tortilla. You can substitute flour tortillas, however, if you want to. And then I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of cilantro, sprinkle a little lime on there, and it's gonna be so good. Now, I was inspired by this particular dish at a restaurant that I used to go to, and I wanted to find a way that I could make it for myself on the road, so the Ridge Monkey is perfect for that. Who remembers Shania Twain? Shimmy, shake, make an earthquake. <laughs> I just like to shake it to really move the meat around a little bit and make sure that that butter is definitely melting into there. And then after we do that, we'll just position it again. Again, balancing. And then okay, back to sizzling it goes. Ooh. If you guys could smell what I'm smelling, it's already delightful. Now, one of the things being on the road has taught me is that you do not have to go without good food just because you're in a van. And I think it's all about creativity and being resourceful with what you have. So I definitely recommend that you guys kind of find things that you really love and then simplify them for cooking them in your van. Now, not everyone has a massive kitchen like myself. I just have the outdoor setup that we're looking at right now, but that doesn't mean I can't eat well and have yummy stuff, so I encourage you guys to find your favorite recipe out there and figure out how to cook it while also in a van. Maybe, maybe using a Ridge Monkey even. Just saying. Just saying. Okay, it's been about four minutes, which I know does not sound like long, but look at this. Ooh, it's already starting to look really yummy. So what I'm going to do now is give it one more shake and then we're going to flip it. Whoop! There we go, that's all there is to it. And now we'll cook on that other side without us having to put a physical spatula anywhere in there to do any stirring. Okay, checking up again, and this time, ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. It is all starting to marry together with that carne asada mix. And then also you can see the butter is just like caramelizing pieces of it. The garlic is popping. Ooh, it smells delightful, but we're not done yet. In fact, now that it is cooking through pretty quickly, I think we're gonna turn up the heat just a little bit to see if we can't get some of this juice off of it. Right about there should do. The flame is coming out to the edge of the cooker now. So that should do very nicely. You'll see some of the steam is rising out of the back there in that small vented area. And overall, I think we have maybe two minutes max before this is finished. Okay, one last thing. We are now going to go ahead and remove the lid. And the lid actually slides out. As you can see, there's a little joint in the back there. And so this is a two-hand job, but what I'm going to do is actually pull the lid over and then off and we're going to make our tortillas using this side okay you can still hear that sizzling in the background over there but this particular pan already has a little bit of that splash up butter so now what we're going to do is just stick two of these little tortillas right here and we're going to heat the tortillas now i like to always have two because it just makes them a little bit stronger whenever i'm making my tortilla itself with all the toppings so it doesn't fall apart so that's what we're going to do Okay, so this one, as you can see, looks delicious, but now we're going to move it over to the side, and then we're going to put this on top of the flame. Now, this will only take a couple of minutes max for it to be completely finished. Okay, I just flipped it. You can see that it has a little bit of color change, but not anything too crazy. I do not like to fully toast mine, but you can if you want to, but um, this is done. Okay, so now that we are plating, we're going to take our tortillas and just slide them onto our plate. And then we are going to take our toppings and slide them right on over also. Now, if you don't wanna take the excess butter with you, you can use your spatula for this. 
I like sometimes to have a little bit of the excess butter just to kind of melt into the tortilla, but you don't have to. I also went ahead and left this on so I could have the little crispiness to it because some of this is kind of a fatty meat because it's a stew meat. However, if it was not a stew meat, I probably wouldn't have left it on for quite as long just because I wouldn't have to have that texture. But now that that's done, let's go ahead and garnish. Pretty much any blue cheese will work for this. I just picked this up at the grocery store because it's what they had. And we're just going to take a little bit and sprinkle it on top. If you love blue cheese, put more. If you don't love it as much, just use a little bit of it for the earthiness that it brings to the thing. It's so good. And then we're going to use some cilantro and limes, which I have pre-cut. I was really excited about this yesterday whenever I was getting everything together. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cilantro on there and then I'm going to take one of these limes and I am going to squirt it. And that's pretty much it on this one. This is one of my favorites. You will always find me grabbing these items at the store because they're so good and I think that you would really like this one. But in reality, it's really about what we think when we bite. So with that said, ooh, it's time to chow down on meal number one. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so realistically, I think you can see the Ridge Monkey can do a lot of things, and then it's just one one small thing that you can do in there with a relatively simple amount of ingredients. But there are more things that we can do and now I'm gonna do something that I've never done this exact thing, but I've done a version of this thing, so you guys are here for the experiment. Today we're gonna be making a very unique grilled cheese. Okay guys, so everything's cleaned up and now it's time for us to start on our second recipe, which is an elevated grilled cheese. Now, I love grilled cheese more than most. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that there's been some discussion about some cheese in the channel. So this is something that I was kind of cooking up in my head that would be tasty and delicious, but also follow the grilled cheese pattern. So today we're going to be making a very unique take on the grilled cheese. We're gonna be starting off with a good bread, which is some oat nut bread. This is gonna give us a nice flavorful bite, although it isn't the traditional shape. So this could be interesting when putting it into the Ridge Monkey. Next up, we're going back to the Kerrygold because I really like this butter. It's really tasty and I like the fact that it's in a container that doesn't get squashed in my van. Then we have something that I think is gonna be delightful. This is blueberry and vanilla goat cheese. And just look at the color on this. This looks like it's gonna be fabulous. So I can't wait to see what flavor that just erupts from within once that we put this into a sandwich. Last but not least, we have some pancetta and I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different with this than you might traditionally think. This is going to be fried up first and then placed on the sandwich just because I want a little bit of crispiness. So in other words, we're about to make what could be possibly one of the best grilled cheeses I've ever made because it's gonna have some different flavor profiles, but also be delightful. Yeah, this is gonna be good guys. This is gonna be really good. Of course, all things require a little bit of prep. So what we're going to do first is cut our cheese and uh, make it some nice slices. Now this is Trader Joe's cheese. So there is in fact an opening somewhere on here and I think I found it. I am not the best with packaging guys. I just am not. It is not my strong suit. I mean, look at that. That was a horrible tear, horrible, horrible tear. But it's okay, we'll get it out. We will get it out. Even if that means I just have to keep making it worse to get to a better place. Oh, look at that. That is a log of amazingness right there. Now I'm not gonna be using all of this, so I will be putting it into a resealable bag. But for the time being, I think we're gonna take a few nice slices out of this. Oh, that is delightful. Now this is chilled in the refrigerator, but not chilled to the point of frozen. So it's nice and movable. And wow, look, look at this. That is lovely. This is going to have so much flavor to it. You can see where the blueberries have really absorbed into the cheese itself. So that's gonna be delightful. I'm gonna go ahead and cut just a couple more of these because you can never have enough cheese. And if we do have enough, then you know, we'll just eat it separately. But yeah, there we go. So the cheese is now 
ready. And again, ooh, that just looks good. Okay, I have the pan ready, and now we're going to place some of the pancetta in there. I just have four or five small pieces, and I'm kind of taking them apart just a little bit so that heat can get in between them, but at the same time, I'm stacking them back up because I want them to be kind of in one unit. So I think that that's going to cook very well here. And we're turning on the fire. Again, we don't want it to be fully at the top setting. So here we go. That's gonna cook for just a couple of moments. We are going to pull out our little tongs that we have in our cooking setup. And we're going to flip all of this. Ooh, oh, that's gonna be delicious. There we go. The sizzle, the sizzle. Now we're gonna flip it one more time. We're getting those nice crispy edges which is what we want. Okay, so we have two pieces of bread, just like a regular sandwich. We are going to line the bottom of the pan in butter versus putting the butter directly onto the bread. So in order to do that, we're just going to take some of our Kerrygold here and we're gonna dip right into it with a utensil of some kind. In this case, I'm just going to use a regular spoon that I have here at the house because I also have one of those in my travel kit. So it's not cheating because we technically carry these in our van. So I'm just gonna kind of splay it around on this a little bit, but this is the side that was not in the heat. So it's not going to completely melt in. What I'm going to do though is leave a little bit of it kind of around the pan so it soaks into the butter. So I'm gonna kind of cut it into fours and section it off after everything is nice and coated. The coating will keep it from sticking to the pan. The butter will lock in all of the goodness. Now we're going to put the piece of bread in and it actually worked out perfect, which is awesome. And now we're going to take some of our cheese that's over here and just layer it in nicely. Ooh, that's looking good, that's looking good. Now, we're going to have a very cheesy sandwich here. I've decided because I'm really in the mood for this now. And we're gonna split one of these so it covers both of those sections. So it's completely covered, which is what we want. And now we're going to take our tongs because this is still pretty hot. And we're going to put our pancetta on top. Now you can use pancetta or other kinds of meat that are similar to this inside your sandwich and it's gonna continue cooking. It is actually physically cooked, it's just that's what this looks like. But then, after that's all finished, ooh, look at that, it's already looking delightful. Now we're gonna take some of these just little pieces and put them on the top so it gets nice and cheesy in here too. Again, this is a super cheesy sandwich that I'm very excited about eating. And uh, typically I wouldn't use this much cheese, but today I am in the mood. Now we're going to take this other one that just had the pancetta in it and actually just take a paper towel and absorb up out any of the leftover residual grease, but leave it a little bit on there. Just a very narrow cast of it, just so that it can actually form a barrier very similar to that Kerrygold. It's going to lock in more flavor, but it's also going to reduce it from feeling oily. Ooh, this is about to be so, so good. And it shouldn't take very long. There is no better feeling than the comfort of a grilled cheese sandwich. And no matter how you make it, you can't really go wrong. So this is gonna be like a sweet and savory kind of grilled cheese. Ooh, so, so good. But there are several other options that you can use doing this. You can use a traditional grilled cheese using just butter and cheese, or you can add other toppings. Okay, let's check in on it. Ooh. Oh yeah, this is gonna be delicious. Now let's go ahead and flip it and then check out this side. Perfection, yes. In the meantime, I will start cleaning up once again because we're gonna cook one more thing after this that I'm really excited about. This is a potatoes kind of dish and I make this pretty frequently and I kind of modify it based on if I'm doing it for breakfast or for dinner. But this is gonna be something that's just really yummy and I really like it and it's very comforting to me also. But first I must clean up. Okay, here we go, and we're gonna cut into this. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh yeah. Now then, let's see. Oh yeah, that looks delicious. 
Again though, guys, it comes down to taste test. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. A closer look at this and you can see the layers of the pancetta and the cheese and the blueberries. Those blueberries pack a lot of deliciousness. They are nice and crisp and sweet. And then the creaminess of the goat cheese really works well with this oat nut bread. It is just so good. I really do feel like any time that you're creating new flavors in your kitchen, it just really goes a long way. It's like an adventure. Whether you're on the road or at home, you can create things like this. And oh my goodness, so good. I am very happy that I decided to go on a little adventure with Ridge Monkey today and do that modified grilled cheese. And I'll definitely be doing that again, probably whenever I'm around my friends so that I can show off that that one's super, super good. But um, now we're off to our next thing. Again, we're making something with potatoes. Now, I personally love these little nibbles packs because they're a good size for van life, but also they have a lot of flavor in these tiny potatoes. So you've seen them on my channel before, and I'm gonna show you a version of this that I like to make. Now, I change this up almost every single time just a little bit, and it is so good. But we're gonna start off by washing the little nibbles. See why I really like these? They're so small and perfect, and they're a variety of different kinds of potatoes, so you get nice different kind of flavor absorption within each one of them, and so it's super, super good. But only about this many, which is about the size of my hand, is enough for this dish. Now, within this dish, again, you can modify it many ways. Today, I'm going to be using the potatoes. I'm also going to be using a little bit of garlic. If I had an onion, I would throw it in there, but I don't currently. My camping setup. So we kind of got to get some groceries, but it's okay. And I am going to go ahead and use pancetta with this. So I'm going to make a pancetta basted potato. It's going to be delicious, guys. All we have to do is uh, cut these up first. Again, van life is about using what you have. So since I still have some pancetta left, I'm going to take some of that and I'm also going to dice it up. Again, we will be starting off with a little bit of Kerrygold just to make sure nothing sticks. And we're just gonna put it directly into the Rich Monkey. And then we're gonna put the potatoes inside here also. And I'll just grab them and stick them in here. Now, one of the things I really like about these kind of potatoes is they really do absorb anything that you put them with. So by putting in different kinds of spices and seasoning, you're going to have different flavors depending on how you do that. So that's gonna be super cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn these on low and then get some spices. Now for the purpose of today's video, I'm just going to use a very basic spice profile. I'm just gonna grab one of these Montreal steak seasonings because a lot of people have some version of steak seasoning and I'm going to make this a three ingredient meal. So minus the butter, it's three ingredients. It's seasoning, pancetta, and potatoes. Again, you can modify this a lot of ways. I've put peppers in it, I've put onions in it, I've put chicken instead of pancetta, I've used steak, I've used sausage, and the list could go on and on. This is just a very basic starter meal that you can easily do for one person using the Ridge Monkey. And there are so many variations that I encourage you guys to try one if you have a Ridge Monkey and let me know how you made this basic meat and potatoes dish. Okay, it's time to open it. And we're going to go ahead and just liberally spice the potatoes. So we're going to take this Montreal and open it with one hand, maybe. <laughs> and then we're just going to put this in there kind of like this. And it doesn't have to be like super coated or anything. We're going to add some more in just a little bit. We just want it to start baking in the flavor with the butter. Time for a little shake. And let's look at it real quick. Oh, yeah. It's starting to coat the potatoes in the butter. You can see that now. So what we're gonna do is flip it and let it cook for just a couple more minutes and then we're going to add in our pancetta. While that's cooking, I wanna show you this also. This is just something I picked up at Walmart in the hair care section and I thought it was worth talking about today because a lot of you wonder how I keep organized in my van and this is one of the ways that I do this. This is actually a heat resistant pouch that you can put like a curling iron or a straightener in, but I found it to be a good size for keeping all of my kitchen utensils in. Now I do have one longer spatula and I like this because it's really good to have just every so often for random things, but most of my things are all much smaller and much easier to kind of maneuver in. However, I was noticing that in my storage, 
all of these things would kind of work their way to the bottom and then I would be rustling around trying to find stuff. So I wanted to put all of my kitchen things together and so I found this and it's absolutely perfect. So whenever you're looking to organize your kitchen, consider random solutions. This one was something completely unexpected but at the same time, completely perfect. And with that said, let's check on these potatoes. Ooh, they are looking yummy, yummy in my tummy already. And you can see that some of them are already starting to change colors just a little bit because they are absorbing that butter and cooking. So let's do a little shimmy shake again. And then we're going to add in our pancetta. Let's open it back up nice and big. And then again, because I can wash my hands immediately, we'll just pick this up, set it on top there, kind of spread it around a little bit. Now you would probably want to use tongs and then clean up if you were on the road so you wouldn't just be touching it with your hands. But again, I have a sink right here, so it's no big deal. See, all better. Yay! That's the beauty of being at base camp, I must say. Okay, now that this is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more Montreal to it, just to make sure that the pancetta also gets some of this deliciousness. And I like spices, so um, I just kind of liberally shake until I feel comfortable. There is no measuring here on my channel. And since we will be actually stirring, we will use one of my spatulas that is in my kit just to kind of push that pancetta around into the potatoes. Okay, cook away, little yummies, cook away. Now I'm just gonna leave it for a couple of minutes and let those potatoes get nice and soft so they just fall apart. Now I have made a similar version of this for breakfast where I've added egg whites to it. I have added ham. I have gone just completely and totally vegetarian with it before and it was delightful. This is just one of those variations that's so easy and with those tiny potatoes, it really is unlimited on the amount of things that you can do with it. The sizzling is getting a little bit less Oh, until we open it up, wow. Look at that. I mean, like really guys, look at this. Ooh, let's just kind of, oh, oh yeah. We're getting close. We're getting really close. Now pancetta is not going to ever fully crisp up. It's just going to kind of cook until it is done, but it's not going to look super, super crazy crispy except for around the absolute edges. So we're going based on the potatoes and the potatoes, oh, I can just slide this right in. So they are very close to being done. This is one of the items that I don't mind waiting for because every time I open it up, it is just like a nugget of deliciousness waiting to be found. And it's like a little treasure hunt of joy within here. So we're gonna give it a couple more minutes and then we should be able to eat. Now, if you're watching this asking me why am I using a spatula, if I can just flip it, I also like to use the spatula to kind of clear it away from the edges because sometimes things will kind of get into an edge then they get more done. And so I just constantly am moving things around, especially whenever they're a longer cook item like a potato. Now, I have actually made big potatoes that I've cut in half into spears and then cooked them in this thing and then just been able to just like pull them off of the skin like a baked potato. So that's something that typically you don't think you can have in van life unless you have an oven or a microwave. And the microwave is gonna pull a lot of power to bake a potato, I'm just saying. But this is a good way for you to have that baked potato without having to bake the potato, so to speak. So that's kind of cool. Also, another thing that I have made in here has been a cake. I made pineapple upside down cakes actually at one point. They were so delicious. Although I got a regular cake mix and it made four of the pineapple upside down cakes in this thing because it's so small. So that was a, a lot of pineapple upside down cake, guys. It was a lot. Thank goodness I was doing it on a taste test like this so I could share it with others as opposed to just like being like, oh my gosh, it's the mix that never ends. But yeah, this thing has a lot of opportunities for you guys and for myself on the road. So I'm super happy that I followed the UK channels that turned me on to it. But um, I'm gonna start cleaning up just a little bit so that we can eat in just a second whenever this is ready. So I'll be right back. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is delightful. The pancetta has a nice crispy edge to it, but otherwise it is nice and soft. The potatoes absorbed a lot of the flavor, but we did strain off any excess grease, so we're not overly greasy. 
Now, another way, if you felt like this was a little too moist still, you could blot it with a paper towel. I personally think that this is gonna be great though. And oh my goodness, it smells delightful with that Montreal on top. Again though, it always comes down to the bite. So let's grab ourselves a potato with a little piece of pancetta. And oh, it's still super, super hot. So let's, let's do this carefully. Ooh, I don't think you can see it, but there's steam coming off of this still. But here we go. Please don't burn me. Oh my goodness. Mmm. The potato just melts in your mouth. Oh, wow. And I didn't have to add any salt or anything because the pancetta has a little bit of saltiness to it. Super, super delicious. And um, yeah, this is, this is a good one for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So uh, there you go. Again, guys, I hope you have enjoyed coming along with me for this experiment in cooking with my Ridge Monkey. I love this thing. It is absolutely fabulous. And I always find new things that I can make. Like for example, today, the grilled cheese. It's one of those things that if you can adapt the recipes that you already love, you can pretty much cook anything while on the road, even if you are in a tiny little van with less than 30 square feet. Again, I just pop out a table, cook outdoors, and I have some delicious things while I'm on the road. You don't have to suffer just because you're in a van. Instead, you can find things that you really love and you can make them yourself instead of having to go and pick up fast food or be at the uh, mercy of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which there's nothing wrong with, but I personally like some good, yummy flavors and some delicious quality food even if i'm in the back country so if you guys have enjoyed coming along for today's video don't worry i'll be showing you the bigger ridge monkey on an upcoming upload with some more recipes that i think you're gonna like that one has a, a slotted region so you can cook multiple things at once oh my goodness bigger meals more variety and uh yeah you're gonna like that one till next time guys bye